What's up, y'all? Hope everybody's doing well tonight. <coughs> Sorry, Henry, I'm waiting for my buddy Brendan. for it oh yeah oh yeah buddy oh yeah Woo. you can talk but i can't hear you right now until i unplug this little thing from my phone that's pu putting the sound in from my pro tools but you can talk and people can hear you so i can talk trash and you can you have no i think so yeah i'm not sure what you're saying but yes I'm Absolutely. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little board fade. Because I'm already bored. <laughs> All right. I think I got you. You got me? I got, unfortunately, yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, you're stuck with me for a few minutes. Oops. A little tambourine over there, just in case I get inspired. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. I'm good. Man. Man. Thanks Today's for being here. Day. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having me. Absolutely. Is this uh, is this your first Instagram live? Uh, with somebody else, yes. My wife has made me do it where she's filming me, and like uh -huh. I'm, I'm on display, but I've never actually partaken with somebody else. So oh, it's yeah. an honor. Yeah. Oh well, it's my honor for sure, man. No, I was saying <laughs> it is your honor. Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm. Oh, wait, what? That's what I meant. Oh, that's what I was saying. Oh, damn it. It's yours. All right, I'll get you later. <laughs> Um, is that grape juice you're drinking? It is. Uh, this is a non-alcoholic show. I'm not sure if you knew that. So it's just, oh, it's nice. It's, no, I'm just kidding. Ah, right. I'm drinking tea. I'm a teetotaler now. You always have been. That's true, actually. Yeah. For many it's not really much different with that, I guess. <laughs> so qu question for you. Can you hear me all right? Because I, I have other like toys, but I like uh, analog. Yeah, no, I can hear you really well, actually. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a shame. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was going to just turn down from here. Maybe you really <laughs> could do that. I wonder if there's a way to just hear me. That's much better. Thank you. <laughs> 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 so, man, how have you been? How's, uh, how's, how's things? I'm uh, good. I'm you've been good. home for three months, right? Almost three months? Yeah, this is the longest I've been home since college. Wow. And I graduated like six years ago. Right, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, so it hasn't really been that long. No. Yeah. <laughs> where Where did you go to college? I went to the University of Notre Dame. I have my degree in a box over there. Actually, I found oh. it at my parents' house about six months ago. Nice, nice. Someone asked me if I had a degree. I was like, "Yep." They're like, "Prove it." And I was like, <laughs> "What? What's your degree in?" Uh, English and philosophy. Ah, well, that explains absolutely nothing. I know. I was. Uh, <laughs> This is a, I don't know if you have time for this uh, story because. No, you know, I've got to go actually. So. Okay. Well, it's good uh, yeah. to see you. Thanks everybody. Good night. Peace. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> I actually, so at the end of my sophomore year, you have to declare a major. Yeah. And I uh, went to the head of the music department and I said, I want to be a music major. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I want to do with my life. And he said, can you read music? I said, no. He said, do you have any training? I said, no. Have you ever taken any lessons? He said, no. And he looked at me and said, that's basically like me trying out for the Cincinnati Reds. It's never going to happen. You're never going to have a career in music. You should try something else. I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to use foul language, but. Right. Well, you're probably wishing right now that you would listen to him. I know. Then I'd have like a real job. <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know how right he was. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, man. Like, I, I think that, that. We all have people in our lives who have told us no. Yes, and like this, like this person right here. Can I say no to her? No. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Wait. No. No. You yeah, can't. Hi, <laughs> Joe. Joe. All right. Hi. Hi. How are you? I love you. I love you. 
I mean it. Beat it. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> All day. That's great. <clears throat> Living the dream, buddy. Living the you dream. Know, that's one of the the actual pluses of this whole catastrophe is that mm -hmm. I've been home and actually for t like what 10 weeks now yeah and I get to actually be present for the first time in their lives have have um um have you done the paternity yet paternity test yet to figure out which of your kids are yours no okay. um no not yet I was kind of waiting till I spent all my money right right yeah because Annie was talking to me about that and she's like you know you know <laughs> Nobody knows. she doesn't know how is she doing She's great, man. She's teaching. Man, I, my love. I I will. Uh, yeah. She. It's implied. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I just saw my buddy um, uh, Jonathan Scale signed on, and I'm wearing his shirt. Ooh. Check it out, man. He's working in this is the new chilling. <laughs> right. <laughs> do you do you know John? I might. I'm terrible with names and faces. He's he's a brilliant steel pan player. And uh, he was living in Asheville for a while, and he's up in New York now. And I think he's back. I think he's back um, uh, down south somewhere. He got out of New York at the pandemic. But uh, I saw this shirt, and I was like, "John, you got to tell me where to get it." So I think JonathanScales.com. dot com. That's mean, where I got it. Maybe we've yeah. crossed paths. I mean, I yeah, you, yeah, you were doing it. He's, he's a great cat and, and uh, brilliant, brilliant musician. Great nice. friend, also. So why is he friends with you? I didn't say he was. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. Did I? I didn't. No. <laughs> so the family's good. You're good. You look healthy. You look great, man. I know. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, we're it's 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 good. You know, it's crazy because there's it's this whole wave of right. emotions. Of one day mm -hmm. it's it's what is going on, and the other day it's this is great, and then yeah, day, day three it's screaming at your child for the seventeenth time. And trying to trying to use logic with a four and a half year old because how's, I can't tell. how's that working? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, man, I was thinking, I was thinking back to to when we first met, which was um, during the Flectones days for me, and uh, it was the Acoustic Planet tour. I think we met before that. It was before that, really. Where was that? At the Jammy Awards. Oh, when it was okay. you in New York at the Madison Square Garden, Madison Square Garden. Garden. at the theater, right? Yeah, the theater. <laughs> it was Mavis Staples, yeah, Sinead O'Connor, yeah, Huey Lewis, Humphreys McGee, and then some hack, Jeff, uh, uh, yeah, Coffin. yeah, yeah. But yeah. the thing was, man, I was, I was in a different room, you guys were playing, <laughs> yeah somewhere and i was like i was sequestered off like 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 it was like the um it was some weird smoking room i think or something it was the yeah, yeah. next to the janitor's closet i think it was i think it was the janitor's closet actually. <laughs> <laughs> at least you had your own room we had to share a room with huey lewis you know oh boy embarrassing yeah yeah well you know he, he probably you know he probably wasn't there very much you know, he's probably <laughs> he in the limo you know yeah <laughs> you know, I got to go wait in the lobby for the limo. So. so that was the first time we met. That was the first time we met. And I think we literally met and played like 45 minutes later. Hmm. Um, yeah. I think we did I'll Take You There. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right with Mavis. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you stayed up for the wait. I'm not sure. Who else was on that one? Huey, Mavis. Yes. And, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But that was 2004. Oh, wow. So that was before Acoustic Planet then. Acoustic Planet was the next summer. Yeah. Yeah. Which that was fa fantastic. You know, I couldn't, when you guys invited us, we were like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I can't, I can't even remember who it was. I think, I can't remember if Bela was familiar with you guys already or, or, or who it was or how all that happened. But uh, what, wasn't it that, that, um, we had a couple of different groups. So it was you guys. Mm -hmm. It was a Mark Broussard also. Yep. Yeah, man. That mm -hmm. was fun. We had, we had some fun on those trips. And I, I think it was, we, we did a gig in 1999 or 98, opening for Maceo Parker. Hmm. And the Flectones were on it. So this was, 
I still uh, had I had a ponytail. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you still do. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know if that's how we met, but I guess either, it's possible, right? Either way, you guys invited us, and we uh, we were shocked, honored, and uh, I couldn't believe you guys kept us on after the first, you know, first week. I can't either. I know. The, mo the most intimidating part was you guys wanted to do the, the segue of sets where we would we'd be playing. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. One by one, you guys would come out, and then we would tag out. So there right. was a, a brief second where we were all on stage together, mm -hmm. and we learned, we learned how to play Stomping Ground, or Stomping Grounds. Oh, yeah. Stomping Grounds, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny, man. That, that was such such good times, man. I remember yeah. you guys just, just being super cool and everybody loving you guys, you know. And and that was only how long how long after you guys had formed? What year did Humphreys form? We played our first show in January of nineteen ninety eight. Ninety eight. So that was just four or five years into into the career. Yeah. It was oh, one man. of the first it was the first big summer thing we got asked to do. Yeah. It, wow. That was like a resume stamp that you couldn't really, you couldn't buy it, you know? Well, you know, it's interesting. Like, 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 you know, people, when I, when I do interviews, sometimes people say, you know, well, you know, what are some memorable gigs? You know, what are, you know, where, where was kind of that moment in your career? And it was, it was, it's always, you know, when, when Bela asked me to, to come and start playing with the Flectones, you know, and, uh, and, and that occurred through a jam session I was running here in Nashville. Uh, there was a drummer that came through that knew Bela, and he put a message into Bela, and we had we had never met. I knew Vic and Roy, of course, because uh, they were already living here too. Right. <clears throat> but uh, you know, just this this happenstance, and I was out in Aspen, Colorado, with this uh, with this other group, and uh, um, ended up seeing the Flectones were playing, and. Uh, um, you know, saw Vic and he got his tickets to the show and we we're hanging out and I met Bailey and he's like, Oh, I'm supposed to look you up when I get home. And, uh, and I was like, well, that's weird, you know? And, uh, um, so we did a little playing after I got home and they were doing a five night run at a place called Cafe Milano here in town, which was a super cool, um, jazz club, about 250 mm. seat jazz club. And they were doing five nights. He asked me to come down and sit in one night and Stuart Duncan, you know, Stuart. I know. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. We had a fiddle player. So, so um, he was supposed to play and his daughter got the flu that night. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't make it. So Bailey said, well, you know, just play the whole night with us. And I was like, well, man, I don't know any of your tunes. I was just, you know, planning on sitting in on a couple of things, you know? He said, oh, I'll be fine. It's around Christmas. We'll do some Christmas tunes. We're gonna do that Ornette tune that we've been working on, you know, and, and that we were doing and like Royal Garden Blues. And I remember writing out um, the tune Sunset Road on a napkin. <laughs> Right and taping, it, taping it to my microphone, you know, and like hoping it wasn't going to blow away. And, uh, and literally, we such, yeah, yeah, right. We had just such a great time, man, that uh, uh, he called me a few days later. And, and he said, he said, Hey, you know, we're doing some dates. Um, we're doing Vermont and then three nights at the knitting factory. Uh, would you like to join us? And I was like, Yeah. And I was terrified, man. I was absolutely terrified. And I remember after the first, um, after the first gig, I told him, I said, man, I said, thank you so much for the opportunity, but, but I'm fine to go home on the bus tomorrow. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm fine to like take a Greyhound home. And uh, because they were, they were so far, they were such a band, you mm -hmm. know? And, uh, and, and I thought, man, the audience knows the music better than I do. And, right. uh, and I just, I didn't want to hold them back. And I just thought, man, you know, thank you. But like, you know, and, uh, but he was like, he said, man, he said, that was great for a first gig. And, uh, and so, you know, 14 years later is, uh, is you know, when, uh, when it happened. You Do know? you still have a napkin? I don't. I probably, probably blew my nose on that <laughs> gig, you know, or wiped up some sweat. <laughs> I wish I did, actually. Yeah. But, uh, um, and so the last couple of years that I was with Bela, I was playing with Matthews also, because I joined him in 08 and went through those next two years uh, with both bands. That's right, yeah, because that, that was probably one of the first years you did New Year's with us. Right, 
Right. Yeah, What's it been like I, 14 years now? Was this year 14? Uh, it's uh, it's got to be. Uh, there was 15, one 14. It's like 14 in a row. There was one year you didn't do it because you had to go play with my morning jacket at Madison. All oh, right. Well, Bye. you know, here was the thing, man. Like we had we had only been doing it a couple years. I know. And and like you know, I, nobody had asked. And you know, I never assumed that there's like that there's a gig, you know. And and nobody had asked, so they they asked if I could do it, and I was like, sure, you know, it'd be really fun and blah blah blah. And 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 while I was there, I really I felt really bad that I wasn't with you guys. <laughs> I I remember I think I I probably I think I called you, uh, and you said literally something like, "Oh man, I I hate to say it, but you should have called four days ago." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little late to the game. I got a shitty yeah. game I got to go do. <laughs> yeah, I felt bad, man. I felt bad. But uh, but we've been back ever since, and it's been awesome. It's so much fun. And and, and here's the thing, man. Like, you know, I, I've, I've been hearing you guys for a really long time, and uh, you guys sound better all the time. I mean, really, man, it's incredible. The way you guys have, have grown musically together. Um, I mean, you, know, you and I joke around a lot, man. We have a lot of fun together. And, and you know, I adore you. I love you, and, and you're a great friend. Keep going. And, uh, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but in all seriousness, and, and we're not very serious around each other most times. But um, really, the band is exceptional. It's extraordinary. And uh, and every time I hear it, I'm I'm really I'm just blown away, man. Because I don't I don't hear you guys for like a year at a time. Right. You know? And. Uh, um, um, and, and the growth that occurs in that amount of time also is, is really incredible, man. I'm so happy that Chris is living here now and Andy, they're both in Nashville. Yeah. And, uh, um, so it's, it's really great. And I get to, I get to talk to Chris more than I talk to Andy, but uh, we're trying to get some stuff done, uh, you know, coming up soon. And, uh, um, but, but really, man, it's fantastic. And, and this, you know, we were talking about this, this new tune that, that uh, uh, we're going to play a little of tonight. Um, it sounds unbelievable, dude. Really, absolutely incredible. I mean, it, you should have heard it before you played on it. Right? Yeah, I did. And I got to say, incredible. <laughs> I got to say, this is probably the most sincere conversation you and I have had in fifteen years. Yeah, well, I'm, I don't really mean what I'm saying. I know. I know. <laughs> People are watching. Yeah, it's just for the camera. <laughs> I know. Um, so, so. Um, I have a, I have a, I've, I've written down a few things. Okay. First of all, I'm not sure. Maybe we've talked about this, but you're a Leo. Yes. I'm a Leo. We have spoken about this. We have, right? Okay. So we were born six days apart, same year, 1976. <laughs> yep. yep. 1976. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, you 45? Is that right? I am um, currently, I'm 43. 43. Oh, I'm going the opposite way. Okay, so 43. You'll be, you'll be 45 next year. I'll be, well, inside I'm 50 something. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the liver of a year old. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny when you hit that point? Somewhere around after 40, uh -huh. someone asks you how old you are, and I just don't know the answer. I have to yeah. actually think about it and calculate it. Yeah. Well, I had to look online to find it. Oh, for yeah. your birthday? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know I knew yours, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, hey, you know, I'm interested, man. So I saw online, tell me if this is true, that, that for a brief period, <clears throat> you were studying classical guitar. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I graduated in 98. Mm -hmm. And the original drummer, Mike Miro, was, a, was two years younger. And the bass player, <laughs> you know, Pony, he was a year younger. So Joel and I had to wait around. Uh, South Bend for two years. Uh -huh. So I literally thought, this is what I'm doing. I got to do music. If the band doesn't work, I need to figure out a way to do music. So I, I spent the entire summer uh, practicing box beret. Who's this Bach you're talking about? It's mo it's more of a mock piece, you know. Okay. <laughs> hey, I just saw someone from Brazil is on here, by the way. That's awesome. Hey, Brazil. Uh hey. So you were practicing Bach for, for a couple of years? The whole summer. Wow. And I auditioned for IUSB's classical guitar program, which is a branch of IU Music School. 
Hmm. And at the time, their piano program was, I want to say, top 10 in the country. Top, It was a legit program. Mm -hmm. And there's four levels. And I level four is performance. Mm -hmm. And they gave me level four. I was shocked. So I dove into classical for basically a year. And I was playing three to four hours a day of classical and then three yeah. to four hours a day with Umphreys. And then three to four hours on my own, just playing. Wow, fantastic! Do do you still uh, do you still play classical? Yeah, you know it's so so. Basically, I hit the point where we Umphreys just started touring. Yeah, and, and I you know play Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, come home Sunday, and then have to be in class at eight a.m. Mm. And it was just I got to the point where it's like I couldn't do both. Yeah. And I went to the head of the department and I told him my dilemma and David Barton was his name. I remember that. And he, he looked at me, he's like, do you really think this band has, has a chance? And I said, yeah, I really kind of, I believe in this. And he, he looked at me, he's like, go do this for a year. And if it doesn't work in a year, I'll let you right back to where you are right now. Wow. So, That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't really play classical anymore because it's you have to have fingernails. I had walked around the nail file. It's a very mm -hmm. masculine um, thing to have. At yeah, all right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I walk around with clippers, you know, not hair clippers. Just, <laughs> just to have them. <laughs> yeah. Anybody? Well, so, so, so have you considered like during during this time, like has it has it crossed your mind to get back into it at all? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Actually, it was one of the first things I thought of when I got home was, well, I've always been looking for an excuse to have some time to play just those old pieces that I knew. Yeah. You know, I probably couldn't sight read anything. Right. But by memory, I could, I could see the notes to figure it out. Yeah. And then um, literally about a week after we got sent home, I got a phone call from the bass player from the Disco Biscuits about he's starting this live lesson uh, pro teaching program. Right. And I, I basically offered up as many hours as I could mm -hmm. so, and they all filled up. So I, I basically went from having a bunch of spare time to not really having any, you know, <laughs> which is good. So how many, how many lessons a week are you doing? About 15. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's, it was a really kind of 180 shift. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting because every time the screen pops, it's all through zoom. Yeah. And every time the screen pops up, I'm I'm just kind of like, okay, who am I? What am I gonna get? Yeah, I have no idea if it's a beginner, intermediate, some. Oh, interesting. Super interesting. So you don't know. As a well, they say hey, Eric Deutsch. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. What's up, dude? Um, they sent out a, a questionnaire, uh, a questionnaire of answers that uh, right when it's booked, hmm. but usually they're booked three weeks out, and I just never have the time to go back and look. Interesting. So do you see people only once? No, I've had, time back up? I've had a bunch of repeats. Interesting. Then there's one, there's actually one guy from Nashville. Uh huh. And he's phenomenal. And mm. we've done three. And the third one, it popped up and it was him. I was like, oh, man. He's, he's <laughs> so, just because he's so good. I, I don't know what to tell him. Uh huh. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's been interesting for you also. I'd like, I mean, you know, I do I do a lot of education work and have for many years, a lot of clinics and working with, with students, and I, and I love it. And uh, when when we were texting the other day, when I was asking you about this, you were telling me that you were you were doing some teaching and and uh, would not help us all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, what a great thing, man! Because like, I mean, I know you pretty well, and I've known you for a long time, and and. And, you know, you're, you're such a sweet human being, like the way that you interact with people. And uh, so, so you teaching, it, it's just, it's a natural fit, it seems. And, uh, you know, kind of what you bring to the table, I think is probably really unique for these students also. And, and, and I'm sure very inspiring also. It's, I hope so. You know, there's been a couple, a couple moments where I was trying to teach modes. And this one kid just could not get his brain around Phrygian. Hmm. And I well, that's when it's like too cold to play, right? <laughs> it's Phrygian. <laughs> that's I'm using that one. <laughs> I write that one down. Um, and basically, I I got to the point where I realized that um, 
if you're playing G major, G Ionian, yeah, it's basically the same notes as A Dorian, which is basically mm -hmm. the same notes as B Phrygian if you start on the third. Mm -hmm. Right. So I used the, the example of YYZ by Rush, because mm. there's a progression where it's a B major to a C major. Okay. And I told him, I said, now just play me a G major scale. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play, and he was just like, and I saw the light bulb kind of go off in his head, and mm. it was a very rewarding feeling just to be like, I'm, yeah. I'm doing a service to society at some point. Right, right. Yeah, when that light goes on, man, there's something else, you know. It's like when you, when you hear them start to kind of get it, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's really something else. And it's also extremely, on the, the flip side, is when you're trying to explain it, and it's not clicking. And it's like, okay, I got to figure, because now it's personal. Now I got to figure out. Yeah, 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 you're trying to reach them. Yeah, yeah. And so is this the first time um, that you've really taught? Uh, so that year that I was doing classical, yeah, I taught, I had maybe four, four or five kids in South Bend. And when I moved to Chicago in 2000, I had maybe four or five that, but it was only, you know, every other week. Yeah. And. Humphreys went full tour basically 2001 uh -huh. and then I haven't done it so I haven't done it in 19 years mm. so wow. I got the first time I was terrified yeah how's, you know? how's it been it's been great you know it's yeah. it's been um it's been really interesting because like I said I don't know who's going to show up right and I'm trying to figure out ways to communicate and use musical examples and it's funny, um, you know the song "Regulate" by Warren G. No, I it's know who Warren G is. Yeah, <laughs> he's dope. Okay, um, it's basically <laughs> they lifted Michael McDonald. I keep forget. I know that one. Yeah, you know that. One. I know you know Mike. Um, <laughs> but they, so it's an E minor chord, a C, a D, E minor to a D to a C. Yep. And so I've been using that as my example for the Aeolian scale. Oh yeah. And so every time I'm trying to explain Aeolian, I'm like, do you know Warren G? He's a gangster rapper. Uh huh. <laughs> but it works. Yeah. So it's all about trying to find a common ground, you know? Yeah, it's trying to find an end to, to, to the students. Like, because they're all obviously very different and coming from different demographics, different uh, uh, listening backgrounds also. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's fascinating, man. It's absolutely fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I've been doing lesson packages, I've just started offering packet like three and six lesson packages <clears throat> because i want to spend a little time with them right you, know? you, you can't okay. you can't cram everything into one right 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 well that's uh, that's great man i'm so happy you're doing that yeah it's been a blessing because obviously i make a living based on mass gatherings right and right. i don't know if you've heard but you can't really do that right now so. no i haven't been out for about three months what's going on uh nothing it's <laughs> Everything's okay. <laughs> Good. Oh, glad, glad to hear that. <laughs> um, so, so originally Jake wasn't playing in the band. So, so I read that you studied a little bit with him. Then yeah. you guys kind of started playing together. Is that right? Yeah. So in South he's Bend, he's a bad dude, also, man. Holy smokes! Wow. I mean, I, he he. Can I cuss? Sure, it's okay with me. Nobody's listening anyway. He shits arpeggios. He farts like, you know, the fart arpeggio that you're. The farpeggio? Yeah, farpeggio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he'll he'll walk into a room and just grab a rock and a can of soda and start making music. Yeah. yeah. Um, I but, hate him more than I hate you. I know. I know. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> and that's a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he we're in South Bend. Uh, where Notre Dame is, it's a very small, the campus is, you know, 8,000 undergrad or something, 10,000. Yeah. And it's, it's not a music scene at all. And Jake was from Niles, which is the town just north of the, the state line. Mm. And he was playing in a band called Alibaba Tahini that was playing all the same bars. Yeah. And he was the, the guy, you know, in South Bend. Mm. So I walked up to him after one of the shows and, and just said, hey, I don't know if you teach lessons, but, you know, I'd love to come up to your house and take whatever I can from you. And I drove up there in my mom's station wagon. Nice. And I had a little handheld um, digital recorder. Yeah. 
And I basically just was rapid fire, like, show me the fastest stuff you can do. Okay, slow it down. Okay, okay, next one. And I just was like, give me all your hot licks. Yeah. And I took everything I possibly could from them. Well, it's interesting, man, because like the, the, the band, one of the things about, about your band is that the virtuosity is just off the charts, man. But it's really different. Like, it's a different kind of virtuosity, you know? It's a like mediocre the... kind, yeah. <laughs> Well, since you since you brought it up, <laughs> no, it's so interesting, man. Because like, it's it's sort of like Alan Holsworth meets Weather Report, um, you know, with like all this kind of seventies funk and a little Cardi B mixed in, and Flock of Seagulls, <laughs> Flock of Seagulls too, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's, it's very interesting, man. Because like the stuff you guys play, you, you know, it's it's. It's really interesting to me, um, just kind of listening to the juxtaposition of this, because you guys have such your own sound. There's a friend of mine, Annie Selleck. I'm not sure if she's on here right now or not, but Annie's a, a brilliant vocalist here in Nashville, <clears throat> incredible jazz singer, and just a, a, a beautiful friend. I've known her for almost 30 years. And, uh, and, and she and her husband, Pat Bergeson. Do you know Pat, guitar player? He grew up in Chicago. He's, he went to William Patterson. Anyhow, he's, he's, he's a little older. But he's, Chet Atkins brought him to Nashville. Oh, well. That's what a badass he is, right? Okay. Yeah. And so they've been married for a number of years now. And, and they came to a show, one of the New Year's shows. And, and I don't think that they had ever heard the band. And she lost her mind, man. In a good you way? Know? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand why, but she <laughs> loves you guys. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and, and she said to say that she misses you and, uh, and misses the band. And, uh, uh, but, you know, one day when you're down here, you'll, you'll meet those guys. They're, they're just amazing, beautiful. I, mean, I probably met them that night. It, you might have, actually. You New Year's have. Is, is that, you know, it's, the, it's chaos. Yeah. 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 Right. Beautifully orchestrated chaos. Yeah. It's so much fun. And then once it all is over, it's like, oh, let's go put on a bathrobe and hang out at a hotel. Right. Right. <laughs> That's the payoff. <laughs> um, so um, what was high school like for you? You went to St. Joseph's High School. I went, I went to St. Joseph's High School. It was directly across the street from Notre Dame. Oh, wow. Okay. And I went to grade school. So you had the opposite of you in college. Uh, it was terrible. So I basically, I'm looking out the window in high school. Like, I can't wait to get out of here and go across the street. <laughs> All my friends are going to Colorado and California, and I'm I'm just gonna go 75 feet that way. Right. Um, just leave your stuff set up. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was weird being a in South. So I grew up in Maryland and Boston. My dad was a tennis coach at the Naval Academy. Oh wow. And MIT. Yeah. And he went. He took the Notre Dame job because he realized none of his kids were smart. Is that the enough. Massachusetts Institute of Tennis? Is that what that is? Yes. After <laughs> because of him. Um, but he basically took the Notre Dame gig because he knew that none of us were smart enough to go to MIT. <laughs> so, <laughs> growing, going to high school in South Bend, knowing that I wasn't going to leave was very frustrating, you know. Hmm. Uh, the very small high schools, my graduating class was 196 people. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, I graduated, I went across the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I tried to drop out three times from college. Wow. Okay. I was just like, it just wasn't happening. Yeah. And my, my, my dad was trying to explain to me, he said, look, I will never ask you to do anything. This is, it's a free tuition. Mm -hmm. just, just do this for me and I will never ask you to do anything again. And yeah. actually, um, my senior year at Notre Dame, I finally was the first time I bought all the books, went to class and actually I wanted to see if I could get Dean's List for one semester. Yeah. And I got a three, six, my first semester senior year. And then I went right back to 0.36. A 0.036. <laughs> you just sign your name. And yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Obviously, you know, you're a fairly intelligent human being. And, uh, I can read. So, I yeah, can you read. can read, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're just like, okay, I can do this, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to prove it to myself. Sure. Sure. Um, but yeah, South Bend is a small, small town. It's all built around Notre Dame and Notre Dame football. Sure. Yeah. Um, 
not very musically. Uh, it's funny because I've met a couple, uh, some kids outside of like Humphrey shows. Mm -hmm. And one of them was, this is years ago. He's like, so yeah, I, I saw you guys. And I knew that you saw you that you went to Notre Dame. And I figured Notre Dame was this awesome party school with a great music scene. So I just went to Notre Dame because I thought that's what it was like. Mm. Like, mm -mm. not so much. <laughs> Hey man, do you have uh, um, do you have a guitar or a pair of claves around? Uh, I have, I mean, I have a couple things. Yeah, what do you want? I don't know what you got. Oh yeah, I got some guitars. Know. Do you do you want to play something for the good people of Instagram land? I mean, whether or not I want to, do I get a choice? Not, no, not really. Actually, I'm just being polite. You know, people. Okay. Are we playing together or am I serenading you? No, no, no. You're just serenading me. Yeah. Oh, can, can I improvise it? Yeah. Really? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, <laughs> give me a key. Uh, give you a key. All right. Uh, C. B. Okay. And what's the, what's the, uh, what's the big word, the key word? Um, uh, Oh, what's a good word? I don't know, people. We need a good word for Brendan. Like you stumped me. Maybe the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> How about um, uh, salicious? Salicious. It's more than delicious. His name is Jeff. Was it suspicious? Salicious. Salicious. It's not that often I can stump Jeff Coffin. <laughs> is that good enough? That's really good. That's Thanks. good enough. Yeah. That was a little too much, actually, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, let's talk about this tune. I'm excited about this tune. <clears throat> And uh, Kevin said that we could play a little bit of it for the good people of Instagram. Yeah, I mean, and, we... uh, um, so I can plug in, and uh, uh, and and so so during the so while I'm playing it, mm -hmm. I won't be able to hear you, but oh, you'll be great. able to. You'll be, I know. I was thinking I should have plugged in a long time ago. <laughs> um, but so so you know we'll play like you know maybe a minute of the tune, and then I'll unplug and come back to you, and we'll talk a little bit about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, do you want to? Do you want to? Um, you know, say anything about it first before I start playing it, or just play it? Uh, I like to let the music speak for itself, but um, yeah, let's just play it. Okay, I'm going to plug in, and then uh, then I'm going to play. You can probably hear me through this microphone, right? Thumbs up if you can hear me. Yeah, yeah. So, so I have um, 90 seconds. How, you're about to all play right, like so yeah. here it is. I wonder if Mad Dog's on here. I to he might be a little responsible for this. <laughs> the band's a little loud. Mad dog. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So, so, so That's I got to go back. Out. <laughs> so, Mad Dog, he texted me last night when he, when he found out you were going to be on, on, on the, the live stream here. And he said, uh, he said, man, I'm going to send you over a mix, like with the horns just blasting <laughs> and the band barely there. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Oh god, that's funny. <clears throat> hey, so so before I actually, so I've got I've got the Pro Tools session up here. I'm gonna flip this around, so you can see, um, you know, the the horn parts here, and this is the track that you guys sent to me, mm -hmm. and uh, 
um, and, and we'll play some bits and pieces. I, I have a question uh, real quick. So did, yeah. you, did you guys layer it separately? Um, what did, you you do, did you do your part by yourself? Yeah. Did yeah. You, who went first? I think Mad Dog went first. Okay. I think. I, I'm not sure. I'm not I, sure if he's on here or not, but uh, <clears throat> uh, he said he was going to try to tune in. Yeah, I, I, it's fun. I actually spoke to him on the phone two nights ago. Yeah. Um, he sent me a song that he wants me to sing, and and it, it's he's writing music now with vocals. Yeah. Slam it. Yeah, he's been really busy. He's, he's such a talent, man. Love that. Uh, love that I just wish he was a nice guy. You know? Yeah, I know. Me too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Oh, so before we play this, also, I want to I want to make mention of one of the reasons why I do these live studio streams is is um, is to raise money for local Nashville musicians. Um, you know, from the tornadoes to the the pandemic, you know, everybody here is is out of work, and uh, so through ITA Studio Streams, um, uh, there's a website itastudiostreams.com that people can go and donate through PayPal. And a hundred percent of that money goes to local musicians. Awesome. And uh, within, so it's been about three months and we'll have raised about $10,000 for local cats. So, so when we start the, the, the live stream back up again uh, with like duos or trios in, in my studio here. Um, oh yeah. It's got a lovely little loft space here, you know, um, then, then I'll be able to pay everybody like it's a real gig, you know, and we'll, I think we're going to start on Thursdays again in June and, uh, Ooh. Oh yeah, I like that. I got a drum. Come hang out there. Oh, yeah. yeah, so you yeah. can do it there too. Yeah, but you're not invited. And, oh damn it. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, so 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 we've been doing that, and uh, so I just want to invite everybody to check out the website if they feel so inclined. Itastudiostreams.com, and uh, um, we'll we'll let some more folks know about that. But uh, um, um, so that's what we've been doing. That's what we've been doing. Great. And uh, so, okay, well, let's let's jump into this tune, man. Um, so we did this on on New Year's. How how old of a tune is this? Is this so brand that, new? Yeah, New Year's was the very first time we played it. Wow, right on. Yeah, right on. Well, it's slaying. And uh, so let's let's play a couple of sections. The 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 band, of course, will be very low up in up in the mix now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's killing, man. It's it's just crushing. Here we go. One second. Okay, here we go. It's space bar. You hit space right. bar. Oh, what's that? Could that have been a bass clarinet? <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna stop for a second. I have a I have a question for you. Uh, yeah. So who who are some of your primary influences as a musician and a vocalist? Ooh. Like if you if you had to name like your top three. Ooh, top this is a good three. look for me, by the way, isn't it? It's nice. Yeah, actually, it's very. You guys should I remember I had the the, the headband on at, at uh, New Year's. We, yeah, we should get some headphones and say um, you know, or <laughs> just um, or Brendan. Or what? I mean, yes. whatever. You could be anything, you know. Yeah. Warren G. Warren G. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, if you had a name like, like number one. Top, yeah, number one. John Lennon. Ah, no kidding. John Lennon. Yeah. I don't. I just. Uh, if I if I could only listen to one songwriter, right? Even though it's limited, because he, you know. So yeah, John Lennon, and as a musician and a singer, yeah. Um, Jimmy Page was probably the biggest guitar player for me coming up. Yeah. Uh, and it's hard to pick a third. Uh, it's definitely not any sax players. Um, 
I don't know, man. That's a great. That would have pegged you for a Kenny G guy, but you know what? (laughs) Who plays? (laughs) It's careless whisper. Next question. Careless whisper. (laughs) (laughs) What about Bowie? Bowie's up there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Yeah. Because I hear that sometimes in your inflections, also, like the way you sing and sort of like the not only the timbre of your voice sometimes, but, but the notes that you pick in your melodies mm-hmm. sometimes I, seem very influenced by that. I think we have similar range where my sweet yeah. spot is between an E natural and a G sharp where I feel yeah. like I don't have to think about it. Yeah. And that once I go above G sharp and A, it's like, is this worth the risk? Man, when, when did you first realize that you could sing? Like, like what kind of brought that on? Uh, the first, man, honestly, the first time I ever really sang, I was in a musical in seventh and eighth grade in uh, South Bend. Hmm. And I basically auditioned for the musical because the, this girl that I had a crush on was in it. And I thought that if I got in, um, yeah. and I got the lead role of both of them. What was it? Do you remember? Uh, the first one was Magellan, which <laughs> it's... <laughs> This is good. This is good. It's basically the hip hop adventures of the Spanish explorer Magellan. Yes, uh, Ferdinand. So, the premise of that one was uh, it was a a movie being filmed about Magellan and a rock star was playing Magellan, and the rock star's name was Stern, and I was Stern. Of course, you were. I wore a Michael Jackson jacket, sunglasses. My voice cracked in front of the whole school. It was like puberty. <laughs> Peter Brady. You went to puberty in, in front of your whole school. <laughs> yeah. I still remember it vividly. It was terrifying. <laughs> that's awesome. And then, um, so that's the first time I really, because I auditioned and I didn't really think I was going to, and they were like, you get the lead part. I said, so what? Yeah. I can sing? You know, so it was by mistake. Wow. Well, oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And, Very cool. Uh, I was in a couple of high school bands where I couldn't play guitar, but I was, I'd hold the microphone like, and like I was an, I was Eddie better. Yeah. Were you angst ridden? Oh yeah, man. I was 14 <laughs> and pissed at the world. Why is my, why are my parents so nice to me? <laughs> I want to be angry. <laughs> I've had a great childhood so far. Damn it. <laughs> I know. How am I ever going to write music? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Hey, let's listen to some more of this tune. I'm going to plug back in so people get good sound. Right, I'm going to drop in a little further in in the tune. Uh, and Jake's solo is coming up. Uh, is it Jake playing that or is it you? It's Jake. It's, it's Jake. Yeah, it's I can, like I can one, read your lips one there. One take, Jake. One take? Is that what you said? One take, Jake. Yeah, I can't hear you, so I'm just assuming. I'm just going to make stuff up. You say you want to solo on this tune rather than Jake, and you're really angry about it. And, oh, oh, boy. Uh, we've crossed a lot. Okay, so so what were you what were you saying about him on that solo? I saying is one take, Jake. One take, he Jake. Gets, he gets on the first take and he's like, well, "Let me do another one," and each yeah. one is better. And then yeah. it's like now we have to pick through seventeen awesome solos. <laughs> he's amazing. I'm just gonna he's go easy. <clears throat> so I was um, thinking. So I, I I was thinking that. Um, um, well, let's let's play that section again. I, I had a thought, so let's um let's let's check this out. I'm gonna get back into that section again. Uh, where the solo is. It's sort of an alternate version.
<laughs> so, yes, that, that is the bass clarinet running through a flanger and a delay and uh, with a little octave, uh, sub-octave on the, on the last part. So, so I'm thinking I'm just, you know, just going to send it to Kevin and uh, uh, I'm just going to let Jake know by text that his solo was out with right. now a bass clarinet solo on it. Just you know? text him, you're welcome. Hey, that's exactly it. Yeah, I'm just um, gonna, yeah. I was curious how many times you're going <laughs> to be able to squeeze that in tonight. Um, <laughs> Fun fact I, I wanted to mention, you know, the, I don't know if you can hear it because I'm so low in the mix, but mm. there's a, a, a slide going in the background, like a, uh -huh. that's me playing a bottle of wine Ooh. as a slide. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, um, nix the horns and listen right during the solo. It's, it's right when I, yeah, right at the end of the solo, you can hear it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to uh, go in right, uh, like deep in the solo. I want to, I want to hear that. Red or white? It's red. Definitely red. That's what I thought. That's how it sounds. Vino Tinto. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when is this tune coming out? Uh, so we're part of a, it's some uh, benefit. I don't really know. Stasic. I see Stasic's on here. What's up, Stasic? Uh -oh, okay, can he join us? Can we do three people on, on Instagram? Yeah. I don't okay. know. Let's don't find know. out. He said Pino Paladino. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I don't know if you can, can you? I'm not sure. Stacey, try to join us if you can. Uh oh. Oh boy. Well, we only, it's, it's okay because it, it, it's in bed. Ah, uh, right. Okay. <clears throat> um, we only have 60 minutes on Instagram, so we only have like four or five minutes left, maybe six. But uh, so, anyways, when, when's it coming out? Uh, very soon. It's part of um, some collective benefit. <laughs> uh, I think it's COVID related. Okay. Um, you know, I um But you guys will be announcing it on the website and all that, letting people know. Yeah, it's very soon. It's soon enough that we couldn't do the whole thing right now. Right, right. Right. Um unless you want to take, you know, the charity element out of that, you know. Not well, not so much, no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't want to have feel the, the, the wrath. To be totally so to be honest, like I I'm <laughs> such in my own bubble. Um when you texted me and you said, Man, that song is smoking. And I don't know if you remember my reply. I don't. My reply was, "What? What are you talking about? <laughs> What's on?" <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, you didn't really even know what I was. Yeah, the and tune. Right? Like, you, oh, you, oh. you probably thought I was joking. I actually did think you were joking. Yeah. And, and I was yeah. like, and then I wrote back, "Oh, you mean the one with the horns?" <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, hey man, I, I want to thank you for doing this. I know that you have a lot of other things you could be doing. Uh, nothing as interesting as this, of course, but, uh, no. um, <laughs> you know, I love you and, and, uh, it's really I great to you see too. you and, uh, I'm glad everybody there is healthy and safe. And, and, uh, you know, as always, man, thanks for involving me with some of this music. It's, it's an honor. True. No, the feeling yeah. is mutual and I have a very hard time being sincere with you, but I love you more than, <laughs> I love you more than I want to admit. <laughs> right back at you, buddy. <clears throat> well, look, send, uh, send my love to Annie and, and Leoka's love to Annie also. And, uh, um, you know, to you and, and kids and, and everybody. And uh, this was super fun, man. It was, it was man. Really I, feel, I feel like I'm going to wake up with pains on my side from laughing. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, look, take care of yourself. And uh, thanks, everybody, for checking it out and tuning in. And uh, itastudiostreams.com if you want to see a little bit more about what's going on there. And uh, um, I think, I think this will be up somewhere on Instagram. I don't know how this works. I'm a boomer. What the hell do I know? I think they just hit the button and watch it after it's done. I think so. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not gonna, but somebody will. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks buddy. Lots of love. We'll see you soon. Thanks for having me. You got it, bro. Take care. Peace, man.